chimpanzee cultures also mold their methods of communication. Besides their calls, they use a symbolic language of gesture. Some gestures we hold in common. A kiss soothes a little domestic discord. Others we seem to recognize. Two males clasp hands and raise their arms in a salute as they begin to groom one another. Other gestures, such as leaf grooming, we are only beginning to decipher. When a chimp wants to be groomed, they pick a leaf and just uh, run their thumbs over it, sometimes bring a mouth to it, and then drop it. What does this mean? Well, in functional terms, it means nothing, but it's a symbol. It's a symbol for the chimps. What it means to them is, I would like to be groomed. Or sometimes it means, I'm interested in you. If these gestures are truly cultural, we should be able to see them evolve as fashions change. Christoph Busch believes he has. Leaf clipping is a behavior where they take a leaf, makes a specific sound, and in time they do it before displaying. The interesting thing is that two years ago, chimps in Thai started for the very first time to leaf clip when they were making a resting period. They were asleep, their changed position would do some leaf clipping and sleep again. So it was a totally new context of use. And interestingly, the individuals that started to use the leaf clipping in this new context were younger or were females. There is much we could learn from the chimps, but we are running out of time. Poaching for meat and the logging of forests are driving them towards extinction. Today, Jane Goodall is fighting to save them and their heritage. We're finding that across Africa, where different researchers are studying different chimpanzee groups, there are different traditions, different cultures. And the tragedy here is that the chimpanzees are disappearing so fast. Not only is it sad that the individuals are going, but their whole cultures are going too. And that's the area where we have most yet to learn. The group studied by Christoph Busch is disappearing fast. The cause is a mystery. Only rarely does he find any evidence of their passing. It's <clears throat> Ondine, one of the oldest females we had. And she was found by the group actually dead on the floor with her last baby dead and the oldest juvenile sitting nearby watching. The losses are tragic for the species and for all involved. I have lost in the last six years about half of the chimps. There were 80, there are now only 40 left. So it's a dramatic reduction. Each death is felt dearly. Yet it is when chimps are forced to confront death that we seem to catch a glimmer of the chimpanzee soul. What is striking is that they feel compassion. I mean, they really feel the individual as something not normal and that they need help. In one case, I observed a fresh juvenile being killed by a leopard. So you have an individual that looks actually very similar to a wounded one, but he's dead. And it was very surprising to notice that the chimps reacted totally differently, as if they knew this individual is not just injured, this individual is dead. And all the adult males stayed around the body for all this time, groomed it a lot, what they would never do with a live juvenile. And in a kind of a way, asked for the other group members to show respect for the dead. And the only young that was authorized to come to the body was the younger brother of the dead. So, yeah, it makes you think what they feel and how they understand. We can only guess what this female called Castor understands about her own tragedy. Her infant is mortally ill. Since her baby is too feeble to cling to her, 
she resorts to carrying it with her foot as she climbs in search of the food she needs to survive. Still, the baby clings to life. How do we really realize that somebody's dead? How would we realize if we didn't have all the science and all these things? So, I think in a way they certainly know that something special is happening, that they would like to fight against it, but that they can't, and they realize it after a while. Finally, the emaciated form of her infant lies deathly still. Then, with a gesture so human it's painful to watch, she seems to bid her baby farewell with a kiss. Chimps share with us the emotions that bring us to tears. Perhaps they share others as well. An infant chimp may seem secure within the bosom of his group, but this is not always true. A male has stolen a baby chimp from its frantic mother, who follows in desperate pursuit. In the Mahali Mountains, south of Gombe, researchers have recorded this terrible event not once, but seven times, and are at a loss to explain it. The alpha male is now in possession of the screaming infant. He actually beats back the mother with her own baby. Both mother and baby are members of this male's group, and the infant was presumably sired by one of the group's members. Males have been known to kill babies sired by outsiders, but this kidnapper would very well be the baby's father. The infant is killed by a bite to the face. Group members share in the macabre feast, just as if it were a monkey. Infanticide and cannibalism. Jane Goodall wonders. Do chimpanzees feel perhaps a sense of awe, similar to that which must have led to the first religions of our ancestors? Worship of fire, of sun, of rain. Worship of rushing water that is always coming, always going, yet always here. our nearest relations. Our mutual family history is glorious and tender, brutal and shocking. As humans, though, we are distinct and must choose how our own nature is expressed. 
but it's clear that for good or ill, we are part of nature. Just another of its promising but flawed creations. Through the study of the chimps, science, which once strove to set us apart from the rest of nature, has now brought us back within its fold, discovering this mind in the forest. What grabs you is when you feel that there's an animal out there that has a human-like mind, that can solve problems, that has extraordinary social relations, and has got this beginnings of the diversity of culture.